Hermann that he has brought into this. So two words of introduction about Hermann Gundert, on whose memory the chair is now established in Tübingen. Hermann Gundert was a German missionary, scholar, and a linguist living in the early 18th century, 18th century, yeah, I think. Uh, in Kerala, he compiled a Malayalam grammar book called Malayala Bhasha Vyagaranam and also assisted the translation of the Bible into Malayalam. Gundert also contributed to the fields of history, geography, and astronomy, and he has many written many books at, uh, during his lifetime. His Malayalam dictionary is still widely used as a seminal reference book. So I'm sure that today's combined lecture throws up many interesting issues. We look forward to Heike talking more about Herman Gundert and also the Gundert portal. And I'm sure Shiju is going to talk about the need for archival resources in textual studies and also what he has been doing about that. Now I give the floor to the two speakers. But before that, I, may I remind both the speakers that we have about 45 minutes for the lecture and then an open session for answering questions, if any. For those who want to pose questions, can type them into the Q&A column that you see on the side. Now, over to you, Heike and Shiju. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sudha Chichi, for the introduction of the both of us. And I think I immediately start. And thanks, of course, for inviting us today. I will start uh, our joint PowerPoint presentation, which is the first part. And in the second part, we are going uh, to uh, introduce the bo both the portals live. Um, so I share my screen. This usually takes um, a second or two. And I'm going to start the PowerPoint. I'm not able to see anybody anymore. So um, I hope does the PowerPoint, is it visible? Yes, it is visible. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we, we are glad to be invited uh, to participate in the online lecture series Kriti Samhita, the plurality of Indian knowledge system to present the Malayalam Digital Archives Gundot portal at Tübingen University and Grandapura Kerala Digital Archive. So we, you have already heard, Sudha Chechi has introduced us, uh, Shiju Alex, currently working as senior technical writer at ABB Robotics in Bangalore, spending his free time in digital archiving activities as a volunteer. He is one of the directors of the newly founded nonprofit organization, Indic Digital Archive Foundation. And my name is Heike Oberlin. You also uh, have heard already that I'm, I'm the head of the Department of Indology at present uh, at Tübingen University, and that I'm, among others, uh, the initiator of the Gunder Chair for Malayalam and Kerala Studies. In the field of Malayalam Digital Archives, Sichu and I work together since about a decade. In the following 45 minutes, we will introduce the two open source online databases, Gundot Portal and Grantapura, by presenting the history and relationship of the two projects and demonstrating the use of both digital archives through selected examples. Grantapura was started in 2009 by Jichu as a volunteer driven Kerala documents digitization project. Recently, June 2022, it became part of the Indic Digital Archive Foundation, a nonprofit organization founded with the aim of digitization of Indic language documents. Grantapura contains a constantly growing collection of 2,500 plus digitized artifacts related to Kerala, among them the first printed uh, book in Malayalam, the first Malayalam dictionary, etc. Yeah, <clears throat> now let me continue with the presentation. Mm -hmm. Malayalam Documents Digitization Project at my personal blog, shijualex.in, was started at around 2009 as a voluntary digitization activity to digitize the public domain Malayalam documents. It was purely a personal hobby project. 
even though I was having the habit of collecting old materials, the idea of digitizing and sharing it with all came to mind because of my involvement in Malayalam Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects from 2006 onwards. That time, it is pre-2009, finding source materials for Malayalam wiki source was very difficult. Also, since I have some research interest in early Malayalam printing history and Malayalam script evolution, I found that it is extremely difficult to get access to source material since I am not from the academics. To bridge this gap, slowly I have started digitizing the Malayalam public domain documents that came to my custody and released it publicly for the use of everyone. People started appreciating this voluntary effort. During the initial years, my interest was to digitize only the earliest possible Malayalam documents. I haven't paid much attention to the Kerala documents in other languages or scripts. During this time, I was able to digitize and publicly release some of the notable books in Malayalam, like the first printed book, Samkshaba Vedartam, the important dictionary, Shabda Dharavili, and some very old lithographic books like Pavitra Charitra. But soon I ran out of resources because I do not have access to most of the early printed materials, which are kept at some private or government libraries. Then I have started reading, reading about the Malayalam printing history. Through some of these books, I came to know that there is an important collection of early printed and handwritten documents kept at Tübingen University Library in Germany. I understood the extreme importance of these early printed and handwritten documents kept at the Tübingen Library. Most of these early documents kept at Tübingen Library belong to Hermann Gundert. Basically, these documents are Gundert's personal library collection that he collected during his stay at Kerala during 1835 to 1859. He donated this collection to the Tübingen University Library. With my limited knowledge about the university and the people associated with it, I sent an email to Heike. The reason I selected Heike was because she was the moderator of a Malayalam mailing list run by Tübingen. And I found that Heike has some Kerala connection also. This email was sent in 2012. The response to that email and the subsequent events are part of history now. Now, let me hand over the presentation to Heike to inform you about Wounded Legacy Project and its importance with respect to Kerala and Malayalam. Born in Stuttgart in February 1814, Hermann Gundert was a German missionary, scholar and linguist and is well known as the grandfather of German novelist Hermann Hesse. He studied from 1831 till 1835 in Tübingen theology and philosophy. It was in the Protestant seminary that he came into contact with Sanskrit and started to learn his first Indian language. Hermann Gundert left Germany at the age of 22 for missionary work in Kolkata after completing his PhD in Tübingen. While traveling in the ship, he mastered Bengali, Hindustani and Telugu. Instead of Kolkata, he reached Madras in 1836. There he learned Tamil. In April 1839, he finally moved to Ilikuno near Talasheri in Kerala, where he lived for 20 years. During this period, he published around 13 books in Malayalam, including a translation of the Bible, Old Testament from Hebrew and New Testament from Greek. So you can see he really collected um, languages. Um, he went on learning new languages. The archives of information he collected from Talasheri are now kept at Tübingen, the famous Talasheri records. 
a large portion of his legacy was already distributed during Gundert's lifetime to the library at Tübingen. The whole collection today contains not only 123 printed books and pamphlets in Malayalam, there are also about 20 palm leaf manuscripts and 96 hand handwritings and notebooks of Gundert, as well as more than 30 booklets in Tulu and Canada. In addition, there are other works by missionary colleagues from other parts of South India. Just uh, three quick slides to show you the notebooks. I think they are really a big treasure. Nobody has, detail, has done detailed work on that, um, how he prepared um, mainly the dictionary. And so that's how they look like. And you will see afterwards how they look professionally scanned then in the portal. But these handwritings um, are really a lot of work can and is need to be done. The legacy of Hermann Gundert became known to the world only when late Professor Dr. Skaria Sakaria started as a Humboldt Fellow to sort, list, and work with the papers, books, and manuscripts in 1986. He cooperated closely with Dr. Albrecht Frenz, Indologist, pastor of the Protestant Church of Württemberg, and husband of a great granddaughter of Hermann Gundert. Skaria Sakaria became the editor of the Hermann Gundert series, the first works being Gundert's famous dictionary Malayalam English Nikhantu and the grammar Malayala Bhasha Vyakaranam. These were followed by texts on the mythical origin of Kerala, Keralolpati, and Gundert's translation of the Bible into Malayalam. Together with Albrecht Frenz, he published three volumes on Hermann Gundert. In the following years, Skaria Sakaria became the editor of the Tübingen University Library Malayalam Manuscript Series and published for Rice texts. It was from 94 to 1996. Also, Albrecht Frenz published several volumes. He started already in 1983 um, with the Tagebücher, so with the diaries of Hermann Gundert, and together with Skaria Sakaria, he um, published other important parts of Hermann Gundert's large written legacy. On the occasion of the Gundert Conference in Stuttgart in May 1993, the Hermann Gundert Society was founded on his initiative. Albrecht Frenz was president until 2001 and is still an active member. In 2015, Skaria Sakaria was finally appointed as the first Gundert Chair Professor at the University of Tübingen, a visiting professorship in cooperation with the Tunchatu Erotachan Malayalam University, largely funded by the Kerala government to promote Malayalam in research and teaching. Professor Skaria used his two stays of several weeks each in Tübingen as part of the Gunder Chair program, once again in the archive. And in 2016, he published a monumental work under the title Malayalam and Hermann Gundert in two volumes. The linguist, Professor Dr. M. Srinathan, alternated on the Gunder Chair with Skaria Sakaria and also came to Tübingen twice. Besides teaching, he researched Gundert's legacy intensively, founded a new series, and edited three texts in the meantime. In 2016, the new Hermann Gundert archive series published Kerala Nartaka, a much discussed text that provides an unusual background to the origins of castes and social groups in Kerala. A year later, a rare version of the famous Nala Charitam story in Manipravalam was edited along with a study. The third book he published is Prithivrata Dharman, which deals with the construction of chastity of women in the 19th century. And still, here are many more texts, manuscripts and notebooks to study and edit. How to approach these highly fragile and vulnerable materials which are maintained in particularly air-conditioned rooms? 
how to maintain them, keep them, and make them at the same time easily accessible, free of charge, everywhere in the world. Here, Shichu and his request to digitize and publish the legacy in an open source online portal came in in 2012. In 2013, we made in Kerala a small informal announcement of the planned Bundat Legacy project, together with Prof Professor Skaria Sakaria and Malayalam Wikimedia volunteers. Over the next few months, Shiju Alex helped with recommendation letters to apply for a fund from the German Research Foundation. Our application finally was approved and the digitization project officially operated in the years 2016 to 18. The online Gundert portal was launched in November 2018 and has been well visited ever since. What kind of cooperation did we have to realize this portal? Towards the last quarter of 2016, the first high quality digital scans of some of the printed books were available and we asked for the support of volunteers to convert the text in printed documents to searchable text in Malayalam Unicode. At that time, Shiju Alex formed and involved the Kerala Archives Interest Group in the Gundert Legacy Project, especially in conversing printed documents all about 24,000 pages from printed books, both letterpress and lithographed into searchable Unicode texts. There were about 40 contributors originating from Kerala, now living around the globe, who helped in various forms over a period of more than five years. While Shiju managed and coordinated the Unicode conversion, Two volunteer contributors, Sunil V.S. and Roji Bala, have provided the much required management assistance. They had to solve together with the IT team of the library of, at Tübingen around Olaf Brandt several problems like reading, adapting, using special characters of the 19th century Malayalam, or digitizing dictionaries with double column, setting up a style guide, and dividing the work amongst the volunteers in a way not let the work become boring and exhausting. The development of the Malayalam language and script in the 19th century can be better understood and scientifically elaborated on the basis of these documents. What Shiju, for example, um, for example, has already done in several essays co-authored by him. So here is an example the Chandra, about Chandra Kala. Through such work, Unicode fonts have been supplemented with old characters like numbers, characters with chillu, etc. Also, OCR, optical character recognition software, can be trained with this material. So the ability to search the scanned document makes them much more valuable for academia and amateurs alike. Otherwise, you have just a photo, an image, and you can't search the text. Google contacted me for, uh, to ask permission to make use of the scans and transcripts of the portal to train their Google Malayalam OCR software. Of course, they can, as all material that we published is open source, so everybody can make any kind of use of this material. In this way, our work helps to improve optical character recognition for Malayalam scripts as well. Now I hand over again to Shichu. Thank you, Heike. So let me continue with the journey of uh, the digitization, Kerala digitization project. From 2017 onwards, the release of scans from the Gundad Legacy project started. After that, my voluntary digitization project got more attention due to the extreme useful nature of the academic nature of the scans from the Gundad Legacy project. Soon, my focus shifted to all types of Kerala documents. So Malayalam Digital Archive became Kerala Digital Archive. 
few libraries and people across kerala and even outside kerala also came forward to collaborate with this voluntary digitization project some major projects like kerala test book digitization and kerala periodical digitization all started yeah but by the end of 2021 the 12 years of continuous voluntary digitization activity has started affecting my professional life family life i am not able to give time to my wife and kids my health financial condition etc so in 2021 december 19 i have announced retirement from the voluntary digitization activity when i was posting the project the collection was already having 2000 documents the number of pages in these documents were over 120000 pages the announcement caught the attention of well wishers researchers and media few news articles also came about the project while everyone agreed to the decision of stopping this voluntary activity no one was knowing about a solution but finally two long term supporters of the project kailas nath and jisa jos came forward to chalk out a plan to continue the digitization activity it is decided to form a non profit organization to continue this mission thus indic digital archive foundation is registered with the ministry of company affairs of india on 2022 june 14 as a non profit organization with the aim of continuing the mission of digitization of indic language documents the foundation was officially inaugurated on 2022 october 30 at a small function happened at christ university in bangalore now grantapura became a project of the foundation even though during the initial years the focus of the foundation will be on kerala documents because we already have a, a big head start going forward foundation is willing to provide support to other indic languages that seeks our support we believe that the experience we earned in this front will be useful to other indic languages especially the small languages or communities that seek support to digitally preserve their legacy the small language communities may be struggling due to the lack of resources we will be extremely happy to provide digitization support to such language communities let me hand over to haike to continue the presentation yes thanks shiju mm. so let us now enter the gundot portal together we will now present uh, the, the two um, online databases i will show a few examples of the collection and how you can navigate in the portal in the second part chichu alex will introduce grantapura to you and i just have to change to the browser can you see my browser now um as i yes. still yes. i yes okay wonderful so here we are at the um um at the home page of our university library just to show you so all is interlinked we have in our catalog also included all the scans and materials which are there um in the gundot portal so even if you if you are there and you won't um enter through the portal if you search for gundot dictionary for example uh you will land in the catalog which shows you it always takes a second to load so where 
in which um, we have the main library, we have also other libraries, online and um, real offline <laughs> present libraries. So whenever you have the globe, it's something that is available online. Um, all the other editions, they are in one of the libraries at our university. And here you have um, the source. And if you click on it, so this is um, can be done from everywhere. Uh, you don't have to have a special code or anything. You can just click on it and then you are um, in the open Digi, Digi South Asia, which uh, the Bundert portal is part of. So just to show you, this is a possibility also to enter. Uh, yes, so usually we are in Germany. So usually all the pages are in German. You have a little English flag. Usually it helps you then um, that you come then to uh, English translated pages, but not always. So before I'm going to show you some samples, this was just one possibility to, um, to access one of the, the books or the manuscripts, what we are having. Um, it is embedded, this digitization project in a, in a larger um, in a larger framework of digitized texts and manuscripts. We call it Open Digi. So we have theology, Old Orient, South Asia, um, all kinds of um, regions or topics, subjects. So Digi South Asia, for example, we have um, different portions. We have here the Epigraphia Carnatica, for example. It's another um, holding that we are having in a, I just click on it to show you how it looks like. Uh, now it's in the, the text, just a text page. So it's an example from Karnataka in Canada. Yes, I just would like to go a little bit deeper in it and that's the preface. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, it's um, partly in English and partly in, in Canada, but it's actually usually all the scans are in a high quality. So um, you can go deeper and deeper into them and really see the details. You have... Uh, usually then the copyright free use all rights um, reserved so you can use all the materials you can download it and you can make use of it um, at any context you have everywhere this little pdf sign so once you click on it um, you get the possibility to create a pdf of this chapter of this few pages or of the whole book also and download it that is there um, everywhere. So this is the um, the open Digi and Digi South Asia. Well, I just come back. Um, yes, because in in Tübingen, I wanted to introduce to you. Um, no, before we come here, sorry, I want to go back to open Digi and Digi two. We go to the Indian manuscripts in Digi2. And here, um, yes, to the catalog. It's the catalog from 1865, catalog of Indian manuscripts. And when we go on the content, we can see there were already in 1865 Malayalam manuscripts registered. And we have Keralolpati. And um, so in Keralolpati was there already Mudra Rakshasa. So several manuscripts, not from the Gundot collection, but collected by Rudolf von Roth. And Rudolf von Roth is a very important person. He was um, the first official chairholder for Sanskrit in 1865. 
And he was also the same time he became a principal librarian at Tübingen. And he, um, he was the director of the university library for about 40 years. And that's why we are having a very good collection from the 19th century um, when he was head of the library. So let's go back to the um, Digi South Asia. Also here we have Gundert Nachlass, Gundert Legacy. You can enter it in this way and you will get um, all the holdings there. You can search it, but it is um, easier to enter through the, just let me see, I want to go to the portal. Um, yes. To the portal. So this is also the link we have given um, in the invitation. First of all, I told you everything is in German. <laughs> so click on language and choose English. Then it's easy for you to navigate. So you can get all kind of information about the portal, about facts and figures, about staff and collaborators. You remember that I mentioned we had about 40 collaborators from India. So we had the project managers, um, the research assistants, the quite huge um, uh, digitization and processing um, group in the digitization center. So they had to scan and, um, and provide all the materials, restoration workshop, IT support, cataloging support. Uh, external advisors, and here they are all the contributors um, you from Kerala who were part of the project. So it's really large group. Materials. So either you can search among the printed texts or among the manuscripts or among the whole portfolio. You can search the material um, by language. English, German, Kannada, Malayalam, Sanskrit, Tamil, Telugu, and some other languages are even also there. The main is Malayalam, but still we have also holdings in the other languages. Material by genre, you can also search for grammars and dictionaries or for proverbs or for notebooks and drafts. Um, I'm going now as an um, example, um, in the, um, just let me see. Mm, I selected, yes, let us look into the languages as we are in Malayalam and material by language. And you can filter, for example, now I want to see what is there in Malayalam associated with Hermann Gundert in the collection. And it's quite a lot but I just want to show you draft of Gundert's Malayalam English Dictionary. Uh, Malayalam English Dictionary. So if we click on that, it takes a second and um, then we go a little bit, a few pages forward just to show you. It's also, I really feel always fascinated to see how Gundert worked. <laughs> Um, these are his notes. There are, I think, three volumes. Um, this is the first volume where he prepared the dictionary. So it's a mix of, of Malayalam and English mainly, but you will find Tamil, you will find German, you will find here and there some Telugu or some Latin and uh, where he makes notes. And even you can see sometimes different colors of ink. So he added something like here and it's really interesting and not researched at all. And so um, when you go to content, you get um, a rough idea, so the notes for A, ah, long A ah, or short A, ah, E, E, U, U, and you can download it again, um, create PDFs and download the material in high quality so that you can really go into details. And in this kind of documents, it's really important that you can go really into uh, a high resolution. So this is an example of, of the notes, of the notebooks. Um, I have another example chosen. We have also palm leaf manuscripts. This one is um, 
is quite special because it has this this um, drawings and diagrams. Also the same here, you get the information. It's a mix of uh, mantra vada texts concerning Ayurveda treatment and so on. And um, when you go on content, again, you get the PDF um, symbols where you can also download the material. Another example, Keralolpati, very well-known text, but we have different editions of it um, or different versions. And this is, if I go on info, um, this was published in 1843 by Hermann Gundert. And if you go to the content, you get also um, a rough um, uh, list where you can click and navigate in the manuscript. Or then we have here the transcript. This is what I have mentioned, the about 24,000 pages the volunteers from Kerala have done. So they have really transcribed uh, in Unicode font what is there. And of course, it's now um, searchable, so you can also copy paste search like that or search here um, in the Malayalam um, script. You even find now um, if you search on Google a specific um, portion of Keralolpati, uh, you should stumble over the uh, Gundot portal. So this is, um, yes, this way of transliteration then, and it's also um, you see the line breaks here, so it's easy then when you uh, when you read, when you try to read uh, the old script and see how it is written nowadays in the more modern script. Then I have chosen, um, why did I choose this one? Ah, yes, that's the Bible um, of Bailey, Benjamin Bailey. Just as another example, it's not from Hermann Gundert, but also an, an important work. And also this one is um, transliterated, transliterated. And finally, I would like uh, to show you this lithographed image, this hand colored, and then a letterpress printing here is added. This is also a very uh, special, book what we are having also concerning all these hand colored pictures. And of course, here again, you can have the content and this one is also transliterated. Yes. And if I just go back to the portal, um, which is here, the last example Let's go into Sanskrit just to have another language. No, ah, I have Sanskrit and Gundot still. No, this is not what I wanted to show you. Sanskrit. Yes. Ah, I still have the filter in. That's why. Um, So it's a mix here of Sanskrit and Malayalam, but yes, you will find the same book also in Malayalam. It has Malayalam script, but we have also other scripts, other languages. And I think that becomes quite clear once you, you are starting to search the material. As they are mainly from Southern India, I think there is nearly no Devanagari. So we have, if we have Sanskrit, it's usually written in one of the South Indian scripts. This was my short presentation of the Gundot portal, how it works and how you can navigate. And I stop here my screen sharing and Shichu Alex can show us now Grandapura. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So let me share my screen. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So this is the recently launched just uh, two weeks before we launched grandapura portal 
for hosting the Kerala Digital Archive documents. The portal name is jipura.org. And uh, if you go here, you will have a tab for collections. If you click on that, you will see few collections created. This portal is still, we are making it because recently we moved from WordPress to this new portal. So currently we have created a couple of uh, uh, collections. The main one was uh, is uh, the collection of test books. We have around 275 test books now. So for example, this is one of the old test books. And if you click on it, Yeah, so you can uh, see that you will get the scan of uh, that particular book, and you have we have a collection of uh, large uh, early epin Kerala periodicals also. As of now, we have only twenty-five scans, but more will be getting added soon. And if you click on that, you will get the metadata of that collection, and uh, then you will get the scan also. Uh, so currently in this uh, uh, portal, we have around 2,250 documents. Um, and we are adding more features to this uh, um, uh, portal to make it a true digital library. Uh, yeah, and the uh, search is there. And uh, we have here um, our uh, link to our blog and uh, link to our foundation also, where we are describing about uh, what is our future plan and current projects we are doing. Yeah, uh, with this, I will stop uh, the pres my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Heike and Shiju for such a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Apart from uh, also about the massive collection that has been put under the banner of uh, of the gundert collection and also this new work that is based on the old uh, old collection that you have already done so it is i'm sure that this is going to progress into a very important archive ganthapura is going to become a very big archive very soon with your efforts and with the efforts of your colleagues now I would like I, I would like to open this to uh, uh, for more questions from the audience. But before that, I want to ask you one thing um, about the other manuscript, other texts and manuscripts of of um, uh, how many how many texts and other manuscripts you have apart from the Gundert collection, and you have you also integrated all the South Asia material into this archive that you're talking about, the South Asia Library archive that you were talking about. This is too more to Heike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know um, the the um, the numbers at the moment of the manuscripts, which are all scanned. So what is in the Gundert portal um, okay. are the manuscripts from South India. First, okay. we, we thought about digitizing Gundert's legacy only, but then we saw there are related books from the 19th century and related manuscripts, sometimes handed over also from ish other missionary colleagues. And so we decided to digitize them also and put them in the Gundert portal. But it is only one part of this Tübingen Digi or Open Digi where we have also other manuscripts. I haven't shown them now, but um, there are beautiful manuscripts from other parts of the world, especially Europe. You have um, also very beautiful old Bibles colored and so, and all this is there too. And so the Indian collection is one part of this huge collection and Gundert portal is one part of the larger collection on yeah. Indian manuscripts. We have also, for example, a birch bark manuscript, Paipalata Samhita Veda um, from the 16th century Kashmir. This is quite rare and well known. And this is also online and some others are there too. I don't have exact numbers um, and also it's growing. Um, it's so the numbers. Not so much about numbers, but the, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, the, the extent of the collection. Yeah, and it's 
Also, this digitization process is going on, so um, there are more and more things coming um, into the into this um, open digi portal. Okay. Where Gundot portal that we closed, so Gundot portal is now more or less closed. We don't add new material there, but we add um, this is a fixed collection, but we add around it, we, we add more uh, material. I see that in the Cologne Digital Dictionaries, the only dictionary that is right now available is the Gunda Dictionary for Malayalam. Uh, so that was also, uh, I thought I should. Yes, mention. Chicago also has published it in a very nice way that you really can search very easily online. They made it accessible yeah. in a way that it's really uh, wonderful to use. Mm -hmm. So with this, I would like to ask, uh, uh, yeah, there are some questions already here. Tanush Soni ha has asked a question. What learnings do you think we can draw from Gundert's works for our modern day world? And the second question, which mm -hmm. is, since it is the same person, where did your motivation to study Malayalam documents arise from? So, um, yeah, well, modern world and Gundert, I think you always can learn, you can learn to be um, Gundert was very open when he was working. He was actually on his dictionary. He was um, he had a very modern um, attempt. So he talked to uh, people from all parts of the society. So coming from all the religious groups, coming from from Brahmins to fishermen, he wanted really to understand all layers of the language. And this makes his dictionary very valuable until today, because he tried to integrate whatever he understood and um, how a word is used and how it developed maybe in its use. And this developing of, of um, um, of meaning of words and how they are used, of course, this is going on. But this openness, I think, um, this is what me fascinated me when I was dealing with Gundert and, um, and that he was so passionate to learn always new languages. So he really collected languages and he really knew the languages well. And, um, and that broadened, of course, his, his, his mind and his attempt again, what he could understand and how the languages are connected together to each other. And this is still, I think, um, what we can take from him also to our work nowadays. The second what made was, me, yes. The second was about you, what motivated you to? Yes. What made, motivated me? Well, um, I was a young student of, of Indology when my professor uh, was stumbling over the so-called Bhasa place, the Triventrum place ascribed to Bhasa, and that they are still performed, my Sanskrit professor in Germany, that they are still performed in Kerala. I was a student of Bharatanatyam that time, and so I thought, why not, when I'm in Chennai, wants to go to Kerala to see uh, Kuriyatam and one of these performances. And so this fascinated me so much that I uh, wanted to learn um, this uh, Sanskrit theater also to perform. And this um, opened up the world of, of Malayalam to me and also Malayalam literature. In Kuriyatam, you deal with Sanskrit texts, but also with Malayalam texts. And um, there is so much packed inside what is maybe not always visible on stage, but there is a lot of language in it. And this um, interested me and also how the language develops. And this Atabrakaram stage manual language is different from today's Malayalam. So it started when I was a student. Mm. The next is more like a technical um, question about digitization. Uh, what uh, Sonaj Kailas has asked you, what are the di uh, standards that are being followed for the digitization projects? Are you part of the triple IIF community? Triple IIFO. I must confess, um, I was not um, part of the of the de digitization group. This is um, professionally done in the library, and we have quite um, uh, strict rules from the German Research Foundation for this digitization project. So. 
to stand to follow a very high standard. Maybe Shiju knows more about this standard. Yeah. So Shiju, would you like to answer the about the standards of digitization that you follow? Uh, I will talk about the standards I follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding digitization, uh, first thing what I want to mention is about the quality. Uh, yes. So throughout this project, since I was a volunteer, I was free to choose the quality. So we were making sure that we always capture these all documents in high quality. So uh, the I chose a 400 DPI as the quality at which the uh, digitization should be done and it should all be in color. Uh, and we keep the source files in T format. Mm, uh, that is for future use if anything arises. And then another is uh, 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 in the website, web portal, we give the um, uh, digitized test as a PDF. And uh, I am not part of uh, any uh, organization. Uh, here we uh, asked about the IIIF community because uh, as I already told, uh, my project was all always a voluntary project. Uh, not attached to any government or a private in institution that are dealing with the digitization. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not part of any community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so high quality, um, so high resolution and as true to the color as possible, um, that that's important. And um, but there are very strict rules we have to follow in and very um, high standards in this digitization projects. But I, I must confess, I don't know the triple IF um, standards. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, is three hundred DPI the standard for digitization? Um, it, it must be higher. I, I'm sure that it's higher. Um, maybe what we are also, mm -hmm. when you see, when we are online, you can go deeper and deeper into the file. And the PDF might be then not the highest resolution. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it takes too much time to download. Yes. But the original files are in a very high resolution and they take also a lot of space um, to yes. save. Yes. Mm, yes. To what, store. I've, what I found in India generally, uh, the focus is on just capturing the test, not on quality. If you look at uh, many of the scans kind of came out already in various digital archive, you could see that most of the tests are in black and white. Uh, and uh, because the focus is only on reading the test, not on the other parts. Mm -hmm. um, I could see that uh, in many cases, uh, resolution is around uh, 200 dpi or something like that. But in if you go to outside India, I could see in most European digital libraries, the quality is strictly followed. And I think minimum uh, 300 to 400 dpi they used to follow. Yeah, but the one problem with uh, increasing the resolution is uh, the file size will increase. So we cannot increase re resolution beyond a certain limit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> one more question to you, uh, Vaheke. Will you also speak a little bit about a Gundar chair that you have established and what are the activities of the chair? And I think that will be a fitting conclusion to what we have been discussing today. Mm -hmm. very, uh, it's, a, it's a very important initiative that you have taken up for establishing mm -hmm. a chair in a university and that's very uh, uh, significant for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we um, were able to establish the chair in 2015 in close cooperation with the Tun Chato Erotachan Malayalam University. It was at that time J, uh, K. Jayakumar who was the vice chancellor. And uh, so our first Gunda chair holder was Skaria Sakaria, as I have shown also in the presentation. And um, it was for, first of all, it was for three years, um, or this was the first um, uh, contract we signed, the two universities signed. And uh, so Skaria Sakaria and M. Srinathan came in terms once a semester to Tübingen, and they were teaching, they were staying about four uh, to five or six weeks teaching 
um, students, an international group of students. So we had intensive courses and students came from other parts of Europe also to join these courses. At the same time, they were working um, in the Gundert um, legacy. So in the library with the originals, they were not digitized at that time. Um, so this was the first term, 2015 to 18. Then we renewed uh, the agreement for another three years. And through Corona, it was again, um, uh, we, we just have some extension now. So um, it was um, Anita Kumari, T. Anita Kumari, uh, who was appointed Gunder Chair then. She is professor from Malayalam, specialized also on, on film. Um, so literary adaptions in, in films of, of Malayalam literature. And she came also to Tübingen to teach. And um, due to Corona, we started to teach online. And this worked quite well. At the beginning, we thought it's difficult uh, to teach students uh, a foreign language, but somehow it, it worked out well. And um, even the group of students became bigger, all international students. So they come from all over the world, even from America, Australia, getting sometimes up middle of the night to be able to join the classes from all over Europe, UK, and from India also. And uh, so we had different groups, one reading group, we were reading um, excerpts from, from Malayalam literature, like Bashir or Kamala Das. Um, so we were reading different texts. And also Induleka, we had a look into that, quite difficult <laughs> for us and for the students. But um, so I learned also a lot through these classes. And on the other side, I'm usually running um, Malayalam beginners course, this I'm, I'm running. And they are also still online at the moment um, to make it possible for students from other countries to, to join. And I think for the future, it would be ideal to have uh, mixed classes. So to have them in Tübingen or maybe in Kerala in future, that would be also nice. But to have an intensive week or two, but then go on online and on a regular basis. Otherwise, they learn a lot and they forget also quickly uh, when there is no regular practice. Okay. And um, yeah, and at the moment um, we have to discuss now what can be the future. So the, the, the third, um, um, yes, we have now two, um, um, two batches of the, of the agreement behind us. And now we have to, to discuss about the third, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This is a great, great initiative. I don't see more questions from the panel. So I think that's, I think I'll wind up this uh, session now. And thank you so much to both of you for a wonderful presentation. And we'll keep it up in the future to the conversation in the future too. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for inviting us. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.